Hey guys, welcome to this very special edition of In Memoriam. Uh, this was suggested to me by a very good friend of mine that I should do an In Memoriam on the legendary, late great, Eddie Guerrero. Viva la raza. So, Eddie Guerrero, or as his family knew him, Eduardo Gori Guerrero Lanes III, was a hell of a competitor in the wrestling world for ECW, for WCW, for AAA, for wherever he went, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and of course the WWE. He will be remembered as one of the greatest of all time, a criminally only ever held the world title once. He gave his life for the industry that he loved and he gave his life for the company that gave him a second chance in life. Just a disclaimer before I go on with this video, if by any point I mention the name Chris Benoit at all during this interview, please leave your conspiracy theories or what you think happened, blah blah blah, all about that situation, which I'll probably cover in future. I might not, depends how I feel about it, but for right now, I don't care about it, and if I mention his name in this whole thing, it's because of the connection that he had with Eddie, and that's it. Look at that, got an Eddie Guerrero armband on, this was ridiculously hard to find, I finally found one on eBay, and I bought it for a very good friend of mine who lent me all this Eddie Guerrero stuff to use in this video. That was by far the most difficult thing to find out of the whole collection. I'll put that right there. And of course, wearing an Eddie Guerrero Memorial T-shirt. Also, lent to me by a friend. And the action figures, also lent to me by a friend, so are the DVDs. And also, the title that, in my friend's words, Eddie made famous and held, the WWE Undisputed title belt. Now, when I think about Eddie, I think as far back to WCW, the first time I watched him in 99, when he just returned to the ring after six months of being out, and as Eddie said, he was in no position to be back in the ring, and why should he have done that? But at the time, he wasn't thinking straight. And then jump forward a little bit, I catch his debut with the rest of the Radicals, Chris Benoit, Perry Satin, Dean Malenko, when they arrived in the WWE. And that was an awesome debut, but Eddie unfortunately, accidentally screwed it up, because he went for the frog splash the way he usually executes the frog splash, and it tore his arm right off the bone and from then on he used the frog splash by clasping the hands and that contributed a great deal to staying injury free most of his career. This title belt brings back a lot of memories from that night that Eddie Guerrero won the WWE Championship from Brock Lesnar at No Way Out 2004. It's very hard to believe that that was 11 years ago. Let that sink in for a bit, that was 11 years ago. And, of course, after that, the Cheating Death, Stealing Life DVD was released. A great biopic on Eddie's life and career and everything. And how much that everybody looked out for him and loved him and wanted him to do well. And, unfortunately, at the time, he was just so screwed up there was no going back. And, eventually, he got fired from the WWE and left for a good year before he got rehired and then he won the IC title from Rob Van Dam and it went from there. When I think about Eddie Guerrero I think of that time that he brought the United States Championship back into the business. Now I was a major fan of the United States title myself 
and was a, I thought it was a crime when WCW closed down that title got absorbed into the Intercontinental title so it was nice to see it back and for the few months of his reign Eddie made the US title his own and it was about and earlier that year he had formed a tag team with Chavo and they became known as Los Guerreros and they were doing all the funny little skits and everything about them lying, cheating and stealing which were absolutely hilarious and easily the best thing on WWE television in early 2003 and with Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle of that like around and Badass Undertaker still around that's saying a hell of a lot Eddie can be attributed and rightly so to the fact that he made JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield into a main eventer a point which JBL will gladly admit to you if you ever saw him on the street or talked to him in person Eddie was the one that launched him into the main event and to Eddie, JBL was the lifting of the burden because Eddie felt that because ratings weren't picking up while he was WWE champion that it was his fault as the champion and he felt he was cracking under the pressure so he thanked JBL for taking the what he considered an albatross at the time off his shoulders but in 2004 Wrestling fans were in decline. It wasn't really Eddie's fault, but Eddie as the company man, as the champion he was, he took it on the chin as his fault that everything was failing because he was the top man. He was a top human being in life, and he was just way too kind to his co-workers to think that it was their fault. Eddie touched a lot of people in a lot of ways, emotionally, and made them so happy. He brought light to a very disgruntled guy by the name of Dave Batista, who was having a lot of issues behind the scenes in wrestling, and he brought a lot of hope and light to Batista, and struck up a friendship that was very, very close up until the day Eddie died, and Batista will always credit Eddie for feeling great when he didn't have a chance to feel great. Me personally, I will always remember his short-lived run in New Japan as the Black Tiger, which was very successful and that started off the camaraderie between what would be known as the Radicals when he faced Chris Benoit in that Super Junior tournament. And, and in a lighter note, his the IWC When Worlds Collide pay-per-view when he teamed with his late partner Art Barr in a double hair versus double mask match and Eddie and Art both lost and they allowed themselves to be shaved bald. Now Eddie, his hair must have grown back something chronic because when he appeared in ECW like a few months later he had a full head hair so what is his secret because I'm still trying to grow my hair long and it's like getting there it's just not fast enough. Uh, maybe you can give me some beard advice and make that grow a bit quicker. <laughs> That'll tribute to another beard rage joke. Um, so, Eddie in 2005, it was almost sad to see. The downfall was, of course, the beginning of his heel character that year because Eddie was beloved. His character was probably the most popular character in the WWE at that time. And they turned him heel at his hottest. To be fair, I love the tactic. It makes so much sense. And But Eddie did not look comfortable playing heel when he was at his best playing face. And, you know, it. he was already having issues. Eddie, towards the late 2005, was not having a great time mentally, and his body was breaking down. Eddie had abstained from drugs since his DUI arrest. From drugs and drink, he'd completely gone teetotal, and he wouldn't touch anything, not even to self-medicate, and that was 
unfortunately as it is, was hurting Eddie a lot. And so you knew something was up when Eddie felt he had to get painkillers after a tour for that one time. And ultimately his past usage of drugs is what did him in. And he suffered from an enlarged heart and the strange thing is, after watching the Cheating Death Stealing Life DVD, Dean Malenko did say on the DVD that he didn't want to wake up one day and Eddie was dead in a hotel room. It's quite tragic knowing that that's exactly how Eddie was found. But the difference between then and now is, Eddie was a good man when he died and he stopped doing all the bad stuff that hurt him and hurt people around him and he stopped that and he did it for the love of his family, the love of his wife and it was a very sad day. I remember sitting in school and opening up the first page when I looked up Eddie Guerrero and I saw he had died and I was like, oh my god, that can't be. And then it was a double whammy when I heard he was scheduled to win the world title on SmackDown the day that he died. And I was like, oh my God. It was a very tough day. Watching one of my idols just disappear from my life like that. And then I watched Raw and SmackDown. Obviously they're the Eddie Guerrero tribute shows and just seeing everybody in tears, seeing Big Show in tears and seeing Batista in tears and just seeing everyone like totally lost and it was very sad, very sad. But getting away from the negativity, I will always remember Eddie Guerrero as a consummate professional, as a consummate wrestler, as one of the greatest that ever lived, that ever breathed the WWE, ever breathed pro wrestling, ever breathed life. He proved that he could turn it around. He proved that anybody can turn it around from the darkest day. And that's something that Eddie Guerrero will always be remembered for. He will always be remembered for it. Alongside his Viva La Raza, all alongside Los Guerrero, Sly Cheat and Steel, I'm thinking in 2003, 2004, he was the only good guy who ever got away with doing those things. His act, during, during the match, he'd, he'd slam a chair down on the mat and then pass it to his opponent and then feign injury in front of a referee. And that was hilarious. But again, I'll bring, I'll bring back the point, that was 11 years ago. And when you look back, you remember it like yesterday. And it was... It's like, wow. But the fact that I remember it is evident of the mark that Eddie Guerrero left on my life. He proved to me that you can come back from adversity and be the very best. And no, I'm not going to make a Pokemon joke there. But I'm guessing that you really could say Eddie Guerrero was the best like no one ever was. I guess we can also attribute Eddie with teaching his wife, Vicky, how to be a fantastic heel in the wrestling business. I mean, for the whole time that Vicky was there, she made everybody loathe her. And even when she was referred to in real life, like Edge's retirement, he thanked Vicky Guerrero and automatically the whole crowd boos. And Edge had a laugh about that, basically saying she was brilliant at her job because some some good guy compliments her and the fans still boo her. And I'm betting that was Eddie's teaching, if he ever taught her at all. Obviously the Eddie Guerrero legacy will still live on. His oldest daughter is in the business in some capacity. I believe she is the fiance of Aiden English of the Vaude Villains on NXT. And Vicky is doing whatever since she finished her stint with WWE a few years ago. And the Guerrero family legacy will still live on and 
it will be entertaining us for many years to come. And that's all not it's not all down to Eddie, his nephew Charo, Vicky, his family. They will all entertain us for years to come and Eddie's legacy will entertain us for years to come. He is immortalised on the WWE Network. He's immortalised in these DVDs, in these action figures. He's immortalised in this belt right here. He's immortalised in t-shirts. And he's immortalised in armbands as well. And Eddie Guerrero will always be remembered as one of the damn greatest wrestlers that ever lived for the business. He, I was ecstatic to see him when I was watching various IWA Mid-South tapes. He appeared that one time in IWA Mid-South, won the title from CM Punk, then dropped the title very next night back to CM Punk. He appeared in Ring of Honor one time while he was still the Intercontinental Champion in the WWE and tore the house down, had a fantastic evening and Eddie was like that his entire career. It didn't matter who he was matched up with, he could make a broom look great in the ring. And Eddie should always be remembered for the fantastic performer that he was and not just for his demons. Maybe not remember him for his demons at all just remember the good times because Eddie always wanted to make you smile Eddie always wanted to make you cry if he was a heel and Eddie just wanted to entertain and he did that through his entire career and Godspeed Eddie Guerrero rest in peace we'll see you again soon Essay Thanks guys, this has been Deadbolt Dragons in Memoriam and this has been a special on the late great Eddie Goya Guerrero Lanes III. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe and I'll see you later.